welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what I understand is an absolutely incredible puzzle. Um, I solved an icy fruit Sudoku just a few days ago um, in response to a number of emails we've had suggesting icy fruit is the new Fistamafel. Um, a constructor of such unbelievable brilliance that sort of every one of their puzzles is completely and utterly breathtaking. Um, now we've had some recommendations to try this one. Not many people apparently have managed to solve it. One of our testers did manage to solve it and she said that this is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's got a 100% rating on Logic Masters Germany um, and um, but it's only got four stars out of five for difficulty. But our tester said that this is this is six stars. <laughs> so I, I think the people who have managed to solve it are just very brilliant people. Um, but I, I've read the rules before I turned on the webcam and they're well, they're fascinating, but they're a bit terrifying as well. So it, it's sort of yin yang on steroids. We've got to divide the grid into four areas. Um, and these lines are all different things. They're, they're, some of them are Renbans, some of them are palindromes, some of them are German whispers, some of them are region sum lines. <laughs> so I, I don't know how we're going to go about this, but and I suspect this could be a very long video if indeed I can solve the puzzle at all. Um, but I am very, very keen to have a go at it. Um, and I will do that in just a moment or two's time. I've got some things to mention before we kick off. Um, I'm going to start with a quick shout out to Apayo, the, the, the brilliant uh, constructor um, who we featured on the channel many times, um, who's recommended to me, and I think Glum Hippo has recommended this poet to me as well in the past, a poet called Anthony Etherin. Um, who I started following on Twitter as a result of, of the recommendation and found this poem, the Yeti Speaks, or poems, I suppose we could describe it as. Um, and I just invite you to just quickly read these poems. So there's one on the left and one on the right. So Yeti's talk, the mist rides, Everest rides, climbs, tart, Lethean. I'm alone, yet I rise. Snows, ink, slopes, see the saga in its peaks, Yeti's laughter. You know, it, it, it's, it's an interesting poem. It's got some, it's, it scans well. And you could look at the one on the right. Yet I stalk them, my stride, severe strides, climb, startle the animal. One yeti rises, now sinks, lopes, seethes. Again it speaks, yet I slaughter. And you might read each of those poems individually and think they were interesting. But I wonder how many of you have noticed already that these poems, the string of letters that has been used to construct these two poems is identical. They just put, all that Antony has done is put the word splits in different places. It is absolutely brilliant. Yet, <laughs> yet I stalk them, yetis talk them is it's my stride becomes its stride it's just amazing it really is and it reminds me of brian bilston's refugees where you sort of you see the trick and then you go what how how it's it's fantastic absolutely fantastic um and you know, speaking of um, wordy related things, there is a crossword video on the channel today where I take on today's Times crossword. It features nothing like the genius of that poem, um, but it was it was good fun. And if you do want to learn how to solve cryptic crosswords, it's probably worth a watch. Um, other news. Oh, I want, actually, I wanted on the cryptic crossword subject, a quick shout out to Jamie Fox, who has um, been watching our videos for about well, two and a half years, and especially got involved in cryptic crosswords as a result. And now, two and a half years later, and he reckons about a thousand puzzles later, solves about 80% of all the cryptic crosswords that he attempts, which is fantastic. That is such an amazing improvement. It just goes to show that if you have a bit of dedication and you do take the time to learn the basics, you can achieve great things. So that's fantastic, Jamie. I really enjoyed your email and thank you for sending it to us. Um, 
we've got our Kickstarter running. We've been talking about that the last few days, haven't we? This this is to create the perfect Christmas present. Fog of War Sudoku's inter, intermixed with a novella. Um, do check it out. I'm hoping to reveal a very, very exciting name of um, the next um, the, the next stretch goal constructor. I can't I can't tell you for sure yet, but, but I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. Um, and then I've got a couple of birthdays to do as well. So let's start with saying happy birthday to Snishana. I think it is Snish, Snishana, which is a Ukrainian name. So I'm sorry if I'm slightly mispronouncing it. But Snishana, I know it's your birthday because your son Vadim wrote to us um, and thought that you would appreciate a shout out on the channel. So happy birthday. And Vadim's me message was, Mum, happy birthday. Thank you for always being there for me and everything you do. I love you, which is a lovely message. So Vadim, thank you for writing. And um, Snishana, I hope that you have a fantastic birthday with chocolate cake. And next... Thisby, what a beautiful name that is. Um, that's that's is that after Ovid or is that after Shakespeare or perhaps I, I don't know. But Thisby, Thisby has turned sixteen today, and I know this because your mum Anna wrote to us, and Anna's email reveal, revealed Thisby that you are having chocolate cake today with a with the correct ratio of icing to cake, which is of course one to one. So Thisby, that sounds like you're going to be having a brilliant day. And I hope you do. Um, and that's all the news. Why don't we have a look at String Quartet and let's see what Icy Fruit has in store. These are the rules. Now get ready, this is different. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column and every three by three box. Then we have to divide the grid into four sections of orthogonally connected cells such that each section shares an edge with every other section and no two by two area is occupied by only one section. So, um, I was going to try and do an example here, but I've realized I'm not exactly sure how to do this. Uh, normally with yin yang puzzles, we sort of, we have the, uh, the, the task of um, dividing the grid into two sections of orthogonally connected cells. Orthogonally connected cells means cells that share an edge with one another. So you can see all of the green and all of the blue are orthogonally connected. Now let's introduce the third color then. So the third color has to touch the blue and it's got to touch the green. So that, that would be a legitimate thing. And then there's got to be a fourth color. I'll start that down here. And that's got to, st that's, oh no, now I can't touch the blue. I've messed this up, haven't I? How am I? Oh goodness. Yeah, so you can see, I've got, I've really got no idea how to do this. <laughs> Absolutely none. Um, okay, so now, now that one, Oh, that's not going to work because the orange can't touch the green. <laughs> I'm think I'm probably discovering something here about how the puzzle works. Um, anyway, anyway, hopefully you can see what we have to do, even though I can't do it. Um, cells on the right, cells on the same line belong to the same section, right? So if we discovered that that cell was on was in a particular section of the puzzle then all of the cells on the line would be in that section of the puzzle. Okay, well, that makes sense. At least I understand that. Each section has a different constraint, which all of its lines obey. Right, okay. The constraints for each section are, one, Renban. Digits on a line do not repeat and form a consecutive set in any order. So if this was a Renban line and that was a one, then this line would contain two, three, and four, but they could be in any order. So we could have three, four, two, something like that. That would be a possible way that line could work. Palindrome, the digits along a line read the same forwards and backwards. Uh, I don't know whether that can be a palindrome, might be able to be. Let's, let's, let's try one, two. Yeah, that can be a palindrome, I think. I think, so what we're saying is if we start from this end of the line, it would read one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And if we start from this end of the line, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. So it reads the same, whichever side we go from. 
So that's um, that's how the palindrome lines will work. German whisper, adjacent digits on a line must have a difference of at least five. So let's imagine this one was whispers again, and that, imagine that was a one. Then this square would be at least a six. So let's make it seven, and that could be two, and that could be nine. And you can see each adjacent pair has a difference of at least five. So that's a, a way we could fill a German whispers line. And region sum along a line, if it crosses a three by three box border, each line segment within a different three by three box must sum to the same total. And the sum may be different for different lines. Hmm. The one thing that I'm a bit worried about with that, the wording of that clue is that if it crosses a three by three box border. So, so that's saying, I think that that could be a region sum line, albeit it stays in one box of the grid. <laughs> I don't know if that's right, but that's how I think that that reads now. But let's right. But, but imagine it's the more classical region sum line. Let's say this was a region sum line. That would be saying that those four digits sum to the same as those three digits, because this line, you can see the line segment of this line that is in box seven is four cells long. So it's those four digits. The line segment that's in box eight is those three digits. So the sum of those three would equal the sum of those four. And that is all the rules. I have scrolled down to the end of the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I don't know whether to go back to what I was trying to do in the example or to try and work out which of these lines can be which of the constraints because, well, trivially, things like th these two cell lines can't be palindromes, can they? Because obviously, if this was a one, that would have to be a one as well. So there are some lines that I can instantly see. I can rule them out as being a particular line type. Although I say that I've only ruled out palindromes so far from being some lines. Um, it's actually it's quite annoying that that line about the region sum line potentially living all in one box, because otherwise I could say that couldn't be a region sum line. That couldn't be. So there would be a whole load of lines that couldn't be region sum or palindrome. What's the, is this the longest line? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an eight cell line. I think that was a seven cell line from when we did the palindrome example. This is one, two, three, four, five. That's a seven cell line. Right. So this, I think, is the longest line. So let's have a think about this line. What can this be? Can it, oh well, well, it can't be a palindrome. Definitely not, because those two digits would have to be the same by palindromic logic. So that's not right. So okay, what are the other options? It can be Renban whispers or region sum. Ah, well, it's not region sum. Because if it was region sum, that cell would have to sum up to the same as those four cells. And the triangular number for four is 10, i.e. if we minimize these digits with one, two, three, and four, that would be a 10, which we can't use normal Sudoku rules to put a 10 into a cell. So this line is not, it's not region sum, it's not palindrome. So the other two options are whispers and re oh, renban, renban. Well, that's probably fine, isn't it? The interesting thing, if this was a Renban line, is going to be this digit, because that digit has to appear somewhere in column nine, and it would therefore have to be at the top in one of these two cells, because it couldn't repeat on its line. Um, what is it? An eight cell line. So that would mean if it was Renban, it's either the digits one to eight or it's the digits two to nine. So, right, so these digits up here would either be, there would be the extreme digit that's not on the Renban, which will be a one or a nine, and this digit. So these squares are made up of one, nine, and one or nine, and the green digit. So green, 
green has to so green would have to go in one of those three that's that's really not that helpful right let's try and rule out the other one so what was the other one whispers oh yeah okay so german whispers let's think about the secrets of whispers you can't put a five on a german whisper line so the five is going to be up there yeah oh this yeah hang on this is interesting okay first secret you can't put five on a whisper line because if you do the next digit needs to be at least five different from five and if we go down we run out of Sudoku digits and if we go up we run out of Sudoku digits so five can't go on the line but the other thing is that four and six only have one partner on the line so four and six uh, hang on yeah so four and six um, can't go in the middle of the line because if you put four here what digit do you have to put on both sides of it you'd have to put nine it's the only partner for four so that would have to be double nine so four and six do not go in those squares now you might say ah but you could put four and six there but you can't because of oscillating polarity what's oscillating polarity well it's the feature that on a whispers line every digit as you move sequentially along the line let's imagine this was a low digit i.e a digit lower than five what's the nature of the next digit well, if this is a digit lower than five, this is always a digit higher than five because it must be at least five different. And even if this was a one and we only increased it by the minimum amount, which would be five, this would still slip the other side of a five to the one. It would have to be six at least. And that then, this digit, if it's higher than five, that digit has to be lower than five again. And that means that these two squares are of the same polarity. They're the same side of five. So this couldn't be, uh, we couldn't put the four and the six into as a pair there because these are obviously different sides of five. So that means that these squares have to include one of four and six and the five. So these would be from, from f they have to be selected from four, five or six. This square can't be actually oh actually that's another way of looking at it this square can't be four or six can it because those two squares the four the monogamous nature of four and six means if this was four they would be double nine if this was six these would be double one so in fact in this column that square has to be the other that's in, the, in this column that square has to be the other of four and six that's not here so this has to be one or nine this is if this is a whisper line so we're on a, we're on a bit of a trail to discover things here um hmm. so, so in 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 the good lift world these top digits oh that was a doorbell i hope that's all right and i don't have to go and op uh, open the door um I'll wait and see if there's a second ringing of doorbell uh, but if there is I will have to run downstairs um, okay I've got distracted now what was I thinking I was thinking well could we is it is there any point in pencil marking these digits um, if this was oh, <laughs> I'm worried now uh, if this so if this was if this was if this is not a whispers line if this is a renban line then these squares oh they're one nine and whatever this one is now this is ludicrous this is a ludicrous amount of pencil marking we're not really restricting these digits at all right okay so now i'm worried that actually let me sorry let me just think about this again um we've got to put we've got to divide the grid into four sections this line is entirely in one section but how do we 
I don't know actually. I think what I'm going to do is to go back to what we were doing before we even started solving and I was trying to connect four regions in this puzzle and failing miserably because I'm wondering if in yin yang there are secrets in yin yang in in the in the split the grid into two orthogonally connected regions like you can't have more than two colors in the perimeter I have no clue whether that holds in a four region division puzzle I also don't know whether you can have a checkerboard in this puzzle. Now, my first instinct is that you probably can't. But I don't know. Well, the thing is, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult to even define what a checkerboard is in this puzzle, because if you had those two squares in the same region, uh, so it's all going to get polluted by the... Let's imagine there are no lines where I'm about to draw this because I don't want I don't want no in fact I'm going to move this imagine it's there imagine I conclude that these two cells are in the same region now the classic checkerboard is then to look at that is to say okay well can can those two squares be the same color and that's that's very clearly not going to work in this puzzle just as it doesn't work in yin yang and that's because of the requirement that we orthogonally connect um, cells in the same region because in orthogonally connecting these two greens to one another you can see I'm going to isolate a yellow and if this wasn't on the perimeter and I went the other way I'd isolate that yellow so okay but that's that is that's true even if these are not the same if these are in different regions that's still true isn't it I still can't do it because to connect greens to each other again actually I am going to take this off the perimeter um, let's do those and those so if I'm going to connect these greens so if I have any checkerboard or any two by two where the same color is on a diagonal I can't one of these two squares has to be green because if these were if if neither of these were green in connecting the greens up however i do it if i go around this way how could i possibly given all four colors touch the other colors how could blue ever touch orange here it can't it can't and if i went the other way obviously the same question is going to arise now how can orange ever touch blue it can't right so this is a no, this is a no checkerboard puzzle even though the number of regions has increased so does that mean i can only put in yin yang you can only put two colors in the perimeter I don't know about this let me I'm just, I've got no clue I'm gonna to have to learn I'm afraid so we're gonna to learn together let's let's give the four core or four edges of the grid we'll say these are four different regions does this break for some reason yes clearly that breaks I can see that immediately actually so the, the, the way I'm seeing that breaks is I have a requirement to to get green to touch yellow that's one condition and however whatever the route is by which green and yellow attach that's going to prevent purple and blue from touching one another isn't it and every color has to touch every other color so there are not four colors in the perimeter of this puzzle now okay next question can you have three colors then so if you have three colors it's going to look something more like this and there's going to be another color floating in the middle somewhere so can this work ah well that's really interesting because that the colors on the edge now have already met their criteria so far as so far as the colors blue green
green and yellow are concerned in the sense that yellow touches both blue and green on the perimeter and green and sorry well let's use green green touches yellow and blue on the perimeter blue touches yellow and green on the perimeter so it's only the fourth color now that lives and swims around in the middle of the grid that would have to so if 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 that did that or any variation thereof happy days hmm hmm okay well that's okay so it's <laughs> so it's very strange so by increasing the number of regions to four you increase the number of color exchanges you can have on the perimeter from two to three but we still but we can't have right we can't have all four colors in the perimeter of the puzzle I thought I just realized once I've deleted this I've literally got nowhere in 26 minutes oh goodness um but we are learning things we've learned that checkerboards are problematic so in particular that is going to be relevant for I want to say lines that have a diagonal element lots actually lots of lines have a diagonal element don't they my phone is going crazy um, so let me just think about this what exactly are we saying so for example on this line I'm saying that those two are in the same region because of the rules of the puzzle and all lines are in one region and therefore one of those squares has to be green but then that's green isn't it so if that was so if that was not green both of those would be green but if that was green now my body's trying to sneeze these would not be green to avoid two by twos Ugh, okay all right what about let's go back to this line again then so that i uh, know no i don't want to look at that line actually or maybe i should because of the perimeter i was going to say i didn't want to look at that line because it hasn't got any diagonal element to it Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this line is worth worth our attack. I'm just going to I'm just going to look at it for a second because there's one thing I've seen as a result of this line being whatever color it is. Whatever color this line is, I think this line is different to that color. Now let's just that must be right. I mean yeah, that I means it's quite clearly right actually. Because if that's green as well, there is either these are green in which case i've got two by twos all over the place or there's some other color and even if i have ludicrous things like that these yellow and purple clearly don't touch all four colors do they that's definitely not right so actually this is a that is a second that is a second region so this is the first region this is the second region now, what would be really nice is if this had to not be blue. Um, but in fact, that would be really nice because if that was true, that w I would have had I would ha already have three colors in the perimeter, and I can't have four colors. So the rest, if this was blue, actually, no, if this couldn't be blue. All of these squares would be either green or whatever this was. What's wrong with that being blue? Let's just have a quick think of that. Ah, then that's not... Oh! Oh, that's right. Okay, I don't know then. I... I, I think maybe it's that one, actually. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Definitely, if this one is blue, to avoid a two by two of blue, that has to be some other colour which could include oh no <laughs> here's some 
actually I'm not sure that's right well yeah oh this is massive this is absolutely massive okay it is true to say if this is blue this is another color now let's imagine let's have a think about what that color can be it's either the third color or it's green again but I don't think it can be green again because if it is green again this has to connect to all the other green so it has to come out and now this can't be green so let's make it I don't know purple but now and it doesn't matter if this is blue the point is that green has to connect to green and however I do that whatever route I take purple can never touch blue And if this was blue, it wouldn't make any difference, obviously. I mean, blue can still never touch, blue can't then touch itself. So actually, the, well, the interesting thing here is that either this is already not blue, in which case it's the third colour, or it is blue, and that causes this to not be blue. So let's just think about what if that's not blue automatically, then this, yeah, okay, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. So this, even if this is not blue and say it's purple, that then, this has to get out to touch its, its friend and that hit clips this line and turns the whole of this line purple. So in fact, we don't know what this little stubby line is. It's either blue or purple now. But we do know that purple is a third colour on on the um, on the perimeter. Now the only the only question then is it's still true to say, is it if that's the only thing I'm slightly just questioning in my mind is whether this can all be green up here. I don't think it can be. So let me just check, check that. If that's green, that's green. This is green. Yeah, that, it's, we've got the same problem. Sorry, it does collapse the same problem because of the two by two problem. This cell has to be something that's not green and then connecting green to here, it breaks again. Okay, so this is, a, this is definitely a third color. So, so the rest of the perimeter now Wait a minute. Oh, this is ah oh, just I haven't had many moments like this recently where I've suddenly realized something. I'm just thinking I'm just in awe of this. This is unbelievably clever. It's unbelievably clever. Icy fruit. Wow. Um okay, so now I want to think about these squares. So we we've now established that in these puzzles, you can't have four puzzles in the four colors in the perimeter. We've already got three colors in the perimeter. So the rest of this perimeter is purple or green. We can't obviously have another blue in the perimeter because when we connect the blue up, purple can't touch green anymore. So it's, def it's definitely the rest of this perimeter is purple or green. How could both of those be purple? They can't be. That's a two by two. So at least one of these is green. And if at least one of them is green, that's got to be green. And if that's green, we, and we can only have three units of color in the perimeter, all of this is green. And if all of that is green, then suddenly this puzzle becomes very, very interesting. In, well, not interesting. If, look, look at all these lines I've got now. Look, this line. Oh, this is huge. This is absolutely huge because now I say it's huge. I've now got to work out exactly how to, to do the rest of these lines. But all of a sudden, a great deal of this puzzle. Well, we now know, don't we? I do know. Oh, we said that this line's color was whispers or Renban. Well, it's not Whispers. Because if it's if green is Whispers, the entirety of this column is Whispers. And I'd have to put five on a line. I can't. So this is Renban. 
all of these green lines are Ren bad. Now, what on earth do we do next? Okay, here is a small point that must be important. This line. This line can't be purple. That must be true, because if it's purple, all of that's purple, and that's a purple two by two. This line can't be green, because if it's green, either, well, either this is a two by two of green, or lots of two by two of green, or it's, isol it's an isolated third, fourth color, which could never touch these colors. So this is not green. So this is either blue, I don't know whether that's possible. Let me just think about that. <laughs> if it's either blue or it's the fourth color. Hmm. Um, actually, if the, well, this, this line here, obviously these two are the same color and they're not so and we worked out that you could you couldn't have a checkerboard so that's going to be blue in this world that then would have to be a different color uh, hmm. <laughs> i don't know quite how to do this um it might be it might be advisable for us to use different colors to to purple and blue because because i mean i can see for example that this square can't be green so it's got to touch more colors so it has to go here so there is some sort of line here now i'm going to make it yellow for a moment fully recognizing that yellow could be blue or purple. I just know yellow isn't green. Now that's yellow then to avoid a two by two in the corner. So that's green because this is to avoid a two by two of yellow. So yellow has to connect to itself. So that's yellow. So if yellow was blue now, things would be interesting. That is, well, actually I do know what that is. I do know what that is. Imagine that this was green if this is green which is the only thing it can't be if it's not yellow then in order to avoid a checkerboard that's yellow but that's going to make that yellow and that's going to be a two by two of yellow so in fact that's yellow and now this green has to get out this is amazing it's absolutely amazing so now look what's going on Oh, I've not, I don't quite know how to do that, actually. I was one. I can see there's some sort of region here. This is a region, but it might be yellow. I don't know. <laughs> it could be yellow. Uh, actually, I, okay, I'm going to give this a... Right, so the reason I know this is another region is that this has to be a colour, and it has to touch... Well, it's either got to, t it, it could be purple or blue, but it's got to touch the other of them. So it's got to get out of this corner or it could be yellow. If yellow is not blue or purple, it's still got to touch it. So it's got to come to here. Once it gets to there, everything turns that color. So we'll make all of those red, recognizing again that this string of um, color here could be joined to anything apart from green. So that's not this. See, this is where it's going to get so complicated. That isn't yellow. This is something. Oh, actually, ah, ah, maybe this is a better place to look. I feel like that has to join that. That might be wrong, but that's as I stare at that there, that looks right, doesn't it? So whatever, this cell, to avoid a two by two of green, is not green. So I'm going to make it orange for a moment. Now, orange here can't take this square. Or we've got an orange two by two. 
So that could be, uh, well, I don't know what that is, but it's not orange. But orange does have to touch other colors. So it can't just live in here and claim, oh, well, actually. No, okay, it can't touch all four colors. I was suddenly thinking, is there a way that it could touch all four colors? But there isn't because these two squares are the same color. So there isn't a way for orange to touch all four colors. So orange must take this square. So, or, so this all becomes orange. So, ah, okay, so now orange, we know this orange has to get out. And orange can't be the same as red because otherwise that would be a two by two. This has been incredibly cleverly put together. Now, the only thing that could touch this is green. So, oh, this is, this is brilliant. No, I've met, no, I'm wrong. Oh, nearly. Nearly. Okay, my, my thought then, which I think is wrong, although maybe it's not actually. So my thought then is, okay, I've def on the left-hand side of this grid, if I sort of cut it here, I know orange, red, and green are all different colors. But I was wondering whether it's possible to, for red not to join this. We know, that we know that yellow is definitely different from orange, don't we? Because otherwise that would be a two by two. So actually, if red and yellow are not the same, then orange, yellow, red, and green are the four colors. And our requirement then is to connect purple and blue well purple and blue can never touch red directly and pu so purple would be yellow because otherwise that would be a two by two this is really interesting and so that means blue would be orange but isn't that going to cut them off what do i mean by cut them off well this orange strip here has to connect to this orange strip now somehow but in doing that, it's going to cut off these yellows from this yellow down here. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. So that means that red has to get out. And if red gets out, it becomes yellow. So we get this pattern. And now... Well, now what does that mean? Well, hang on, how can that? Yeah, I think it's this one now, isn't it? Purple. What color is that? Let me just think about this. Is it now necessary that purple or blue is the fourth color? Or is there a world where, I don't think, well, I'm not certain actually. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's, there's a par you just immediately get to the paradox that we use down here. If, if, if purple or blue is not the fourth color, then we can allocate them straight away. Purple must be red, because otherwise you get a two by two here, and blue therefore must be orange. But then we, we immediately, yeah, we get the same problem. Orange connecting to orange stops this red connecting to this red. So there is a fourth color. It's one of these. It's either purple or blue is the fourth color. And one of purple and blue needs to become red, orange or green. Now, here's the interesting question that I think is now a valid question to ask. Is purple red? Because purple cannot be green. We know that. Because if it was green, this would be a green two by two. So purple is not green. Purple is not orange. If it's not the fourth color, it's red. But if it's red, we now know blue is the fourth color. But in connecting this red to this red, 
we're going to have to come down there and blue can never touch orange this is brilliant this is absolutely incredible so that is the this is the fourth color and blue needs to connect well blue can't blue which we know is not green <laughs> this is interesting sentences blue is not green now what would happen if blue was orange if blue and orange were the same when we connect them up purple could never touch red which is also a requirement so this blue is actually red because it can't be purple we know purple and blue are different yeah that's fair that's fair so this is red so this i don't know what this is but it's purple or it's purple or orange uh purple or orange it's got to get out it can't be red and then it's going to bump into one of these that square no i was going to say it has to be red that's not true is it because if this was purple it could drop a purple in there on its way up to collect these purples bobbins okay so these two are either red or this is red or purple uh, this is all going to get no this is going to get messy i don't want to do that i want to think about it a bit more like in a, in a little bit more of a structured way i think um mm, okay okay i see God. i see fruit this this is a new constructor of massive power massive massive intellect and power right which of these colors is the palindrome is my next question now it can't be orange because if orange is palindrome those two digits are the same it can't be red because if red was palindrome these two digits are the same so it's purple and that means that can't be purple because it would mean these two digits are the same so this is orange so it's got to go up there because it can't take that one so that one is red now but also this can't be palindrome now because if that's palindrome it's got to have the same digits so pur so purple is one line it's that line and this must be red and therefore that must be green to avoid a two by two that must be green to avoid a two by two and that must be red to avoid a two by two of green hang on so that so my my okay so we've got to oh well purple has to connect so that's purple so this is this is the coloring but the coloring's dreadful because orange is so close to red so we need to change orange uh to be maybe blue so this and i know people are red green color blind as well so maybe i change maybe i change red to be orange i don't know if that's going to work for people um hopefully ah but no what we should do is use what we know about the the lines as well we worked out that green was was ren band didn't we so the co the color for ren band normally is purple so i need to change this one so what's the color for palindromes normally maybe i'll make palindromes yellow uh what are the other t what are the other constraints we've got going on whispers that's normally light green um a oh, region sum one of these is region sum oh but you can have region sum in a box oh you rotten thing oh well hang on blue can't be blue can't be region sum that makes no sense if blue is region sum those two digits are the same they're in different three by three boxes so blue is not palindrome it's not remban it's not region sum so blue okay so blue is actually whispers blue is light green uh we said dark green is actually renban we said that's palindrome so orange orange needs to be able to be region sum which is blue and let's just look at this 
let's see whether that well that's okay yeah that that might work and this okay and this line is blue even though it's a region sum and it's all in one box so that's what that line in the instructions is about along a line if it crosses a three by three box each line segment so this this doesn't cross a three by three box so the sort of complicated part of the region sum rules don't apply to it it's there it's there to allow you to do the the region division along the borders uh, it's, this is sick this is so clever it's so clever so now all we have to do in inverted commas is fill in the puzzle so and the right okay so that is six seven eight or nine by region sum rules because we're adding at least three numbers to equal that number so one two three would be at least six what's green green is german whispers so no fives anywhere on these squares or those squares uh, hmm. okay one two three if they were one two three which is the least they could be that's going to be a six that's a single cell total as well on this region sum line that adds to the same ah that's ah those two digits are the same right hang on found some oh ah, okay. i really i don't know if anyone else is like this but i hate pop-ups i i know it's black friday and everybody wants to sell me things but i hate pop-ups i just hate them I don't know when my computer's going to do them. It just has this internal clock that seems to do it of its own accord. Um, anyway, by the by, these two squares are the same number. I'm going to give them a letter. Those are A, because they're each single cell totals that add up to the same as those three and the same as those two. So these are the same number. And A, A can't go on its own region sum line because that would require these two to be zeros. So A in box five is in one of those three squares. What about A in box? It's nearly good, isn't it? It's nearly good in this box down here. One of three it probably is worth pencil marking. Uh, what's this one three versus two oh, that's three versus two that's not good it's actually not I'm not actually those two digits are the same by palindrome logic they can be B so B is over there Blech. I think if that's unrestricted I'm not even prepared to pencil mark that B is in one of those that feels very desperate doesn't it so so these right these ren bands have heavy lifting to do then we know ah hang on well we know that is an eight cell ren band so it, we know it's missing one or nine so one of those digits is one or nine and the other digit is that digit which might turn out to be a yeah that could work couldn't it Um, that, oh, I don't know, I don't know, sorry, I'm not quite getting this yet. What about, what about this shape? That looks, that's the sort of a Loch Ness Monster type shape, isn't it? What's that doing? That is, there's a, okay, that, there, let me just highlight that in green. If you look at the green cells, you can't repeat a digit in those green cells. Um, hopefully that's clear. That's because on the, you can never repeat a digit along a Ren band line. So these the digits along the Loch Ness Monster are definitely all different. And these three squares see every digit that's in this parcel of digits here. So altogether, they must be nine different digits. Um, now, actually, what that tells us is that this digit um which can't repeat on this on the stem of the rest of the body of the Loch Ness monster that digit is down there so that digit which we'll label c is down here 
and C is in one of those squares. Now, can C, C and A are def, oh no, C and A are different. That is true because A and C are in different places in box eight, but that's not necessarily A. So we can't lock C into one of those, which I was hoping for a moment we could do. Okay, so I think this line might be the place that we have to focus on. So this is a seven cell line. So it's either, well, in extremis, it's either one to seven or three to nine. So it's always got three, four, five, six, and seven on it. Three, four, five, six, and seven on it. Uh, Oh, bobbins, nearly. I was going to say, so where's this digit on it? But of course, this could be eight or nine and not be on it. But if this wasn't, if this was six or seven and had to be on this line, where would it go on the line? It would have to go there. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I stopped talking. I don't know why. I don't know what that means. Um, ah. right, let's do both of these lines are length five, so they both have to have five on them. Oh, oh, that's something. Okay, that's something. Where's five? Five, this is a five cell Remban line. So imagine you started from one. One, two, three, four, five would be the contents of the line. Imagine you started from nine. Nine, eight, seven, six, five would be on the line. So wherever we start on the line, we always hit a five. And that means, so because there's a five on this line somewhere, these three squares see the whole of that line look. So the five that must be on this line by the same logic that says it's on this line can't be in these cells or imagine that's a five for a moment. Whoops, wrong letters. Um, you couldn't put a five at all here. So the five on this line is in one of two places. Right, I've got a digit. Yeah. <laughs> An hour, an hour, but I've got a digit because five is definitely on the Loch Ness Monster. Where does it go? It can't go there and it can't go there. So it goes there. This is big, actually. Well, it might be because now it's OK. Yeah, five is different from A. That's true by by Sudoku. A and five are in the same. Uh, oh, but I actually I'm going to take this pencil mark out here. Because I was thinking A is down here, and before I was thinking A is there, so I'm getting confused with where A lives. I think I have to be a bit careful about this. Um, but, okay, I'm going to come back to my other thought then, which is that this digit is now not... So this digit is 8 or 9 now, because if it's 6 or 7, which we know is on the monster, you couldn't put 6 and 7 on the monster, and yet we know that there is a 6 and a 7 on the monster. So... Oh, hang on. Whatever I did there was... Ah, what is going on? All I want to do is turn that into 8 and 9 because it can't be 6 or 7. So that means that there is now a 2 on the monster because the digit that's missing from the monster is a high digit. So the most high digit would be 9 and then the monster would have to be 2 through 8 or 1 through 7. And if this is 8, then the monster can only be 1 through 7. So there is a two on the monster now. <laughs> okay then. Okay, that's not helpful, is it? At least I don't think it is. Um, okay, right. But remember what we said about this being an extra region. Where is that eight or a nine? in this extra region and the answer is that digit which i'll label d has to be down there somewhere because it has to appear in this nine cell region so it's sort it's sort of looking like this digit might have to be a seven or an eight so that it can appear on a two cell Renban, i.e. these will be consecutive. Uh, I don't know whether that's true or not.
Let me think about this. What about five in this box then? Five can't repeat. Five can't be on a... Oh no, this is useless. Sorry. I was suddenly thinking, could I restrict five in box four? Because it can't repeat on this, this um, Remban line. So it's not there. It can't be on a German Whisper at all. So it's in one of those cells. Now, if it was on this region sum line, that would be really interesting. <sighs> no jokes about how interesting I am. Um, it would be really interesting to me because it would have to be accompanied by some very low digits in order to keep its total down to eight or nine. Um, but if it's there, There's a small point there, which is if that's a five, you can't put five there, actually, because you then couldn't place a five anywhere in column one. If, if those are both fives, where do we put a five in column one? You've got to put it on there, those squares, and it's going to repeat on this line. So if this is five, that is five. But if this is 5, well, then there's got to be a 5 on this Rembrandt. So if this is 5, one of those is 5. Uh, hmm, okay. I'm not sure what that means, I'm afraid. I am not sure. Uh... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> um. Oh dear. What about? What about the digit that accompanies the five here? Digit that accompanies the five here has to not be on this Renban. That feels like it's very restricted then, doesn't it? Doesn't that feel potentially interesting? Hang on. This Renban we know has on it yeah okay yeah so I, okay this is this is complicated but one of these squares is not five it's green <laughs> okay now green can't appear on this Renban anywhere because it's not five and there are no other spaces for it so that means green is in in the virtual nine cell cage over here the green digit is there it's in one of these squares But, but we know that the Loch Ness Monster has two, three, four, five, six, and seven on it. And that means that the digit that is here is one, eight, or nine. So these are from five and then one, eight, or nine. Right. Ah, this is lovely, actually. OK, so this this can't have one on it. Because if this was a one five pair, these digits would be two, three and four by Renbanic logic. And how do I fill these three cells now on the region sum line? The minimum these could be would be one, five and six and one, five and six add up to 12. They don't add up to eight or nine. There's no way you can take two, three and four and just say they can't be on this line. So this hasn't got one in it. So this, this, well, I don't, I still don't quite know what it is. But, okay, what we do know now is that whether it's eight or nine on this line, 
there is a 6 and a 7 on this line and the 6 and the 7 have to be up there and the 6 and the 7 oh this is gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous <laughs> can you see what that means because if this if this has if we have 6 on this l shaped line in one of those three positions it takes 6 off this top line and once 6 can't be on the top line the top line has to be 1 2 3 4 5 um and the Oh no, we don't know whether the five's here or not because we don't. We've got the five. The five pencil mark I've drawn in here is so ludicrous. I've got to take it out, haven't I? That's so ridiculous. Five is in the U pentomino of fiveliness in box four, um, but it, it could be in a vast number of places. But, okay, so these squares now, these specifically, these three squares are from uh, six, I want to say six, seven, eight, and nine. Is that right? Is it literally all of them? I think it is, unfortunately. They definitely have six and seven in them. And then they have, hang on, but now this line has become a five, six, seven, eight, nine line. It's sort of by, by by dint of its nature. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just slightly surprised that that's how its nature has been revealed to us. Yeah, I think that feels right, doesn't it? I mean, these these can only be six, seven, eight, and nine. They can't be one, two, three, four, five. And these can only be from five, eight, and nine. So there is. So it's five. So this line is five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, what does that mean? So now these two squares at the bottom of this column, they these two squares see the whole of the bottom Remban line. So these have to be low digits, I think. And one of them is C, which is going over there somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Ah, right. This is this is good. This is good. Okay. So C is a very low number. But we actually know that we know what these digits are. Well, no, we don't really. We we know we we sort of know what these digits are. The these green digits down at the bottom consist of one of 8 and 9, which is one of those two this digit which is an eight or a nine so in other words there's an eight nine pair down here for certain and there is also that digit which is a one two three and four because of this virtual nine cell cage or nine cell region now two of those digits are consecutive with one another because they appear on this little line well that cannot be the one two three four so this is an eight nine pair and this square is a 1, 2, 3, or 4, which means this square is a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 in order to be consecutive with this digit. So it looks like that wants to be 4 and that wants to be 5 to me. Um, I think we can dispense pro probably with the C's and the D's down here now. Well, although I will label that C. I think, I think that, that bit, those being the same, feels like it's in some way relevant. Okay, so this digit now is not 8 or 9, which means that digit's not 8 or 9. So these are low, oh right, this is huge, because now what about that line? That's a 3 cell line adding to 6 or 7, so it's either 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 4. It's definitely got 1 and 2 on it, there's some explosions coming from outside. <laughs> I don't know if the microphone will pick those up. Um, Sorry, I know I've stopped talking and I'm, I can't see anything immediate as a result of that. I'm just trying to... Where are 8 and 9 in this row? 8, 9 pair there, 8, 9 there. You can't put 8 or a 9 on a line that adds up to 6 or 7. So those are 8 and 9. Now if this was 9, then we would know this line didn't have a 1 on it. So there'd be a 1 up at the top of the grid. But if that's eight, 
There could still be a 9 or a 1 on this line. Um, okay. <laughs> what does that mean? That digit, which is A, is now in one of those two positions. I'm going to pencil mark that. So it's in it's in one of these two positions as well because it can't go on its own line otherwise that would have to be a zero so a is in one of those oh hang on no that's good that's good um a can't be underneath itself i was forgetting this is also a so that's a that's six or seven oh, i don't know why i wrote what i'm trying to write in here let's pull that in six or seven so is that useful a is up here. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure actually. Okay. Um. How do we do? <laughs> how do we do this then? <laughs> what can we do next? Oh. Hang on, where's five in column one? The, these being low and those being relatively low, that means we've got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So that can't be five, I don't think. So that's five. Well, that ah, that's big, isn't it? Because didn't we work out that that caused a problem with where five went in box four? Five, yeah, you can't put 5 here because that's going to repeat 5 on a Remban by the time you put a 5 in box 1. So 5 comes out of these squares, out of these squares, can't go on the Whisper, so 5 goes here. 5, 5, there's a 5 in one of those three up here. These squares now have to be low, very low, because we're either adding up to 8 or 9, so the maximum these add up to is 4. So they're either a 1-3 pair or a 1-2 pair. There's definitely a 1 in them. Definitely not a 1, therefore, here, which means there's a 1. This Remban's line's 1 is up there, which means those aren't 1. There's definitely a 4. Yeah, there's definitely a 4 in these squares, because there's a quadruple now. 1, 2, 3, 4 here. The 4 in that quadruple is here, so these are not 4. So 4 is definitely down at the bottom of there, which means 4 is not in those squares. Oh, bobbins, no, that's not going to be useful, is it? Well, no, it is useful a bit. Because if 4 is in one of these... Oh, no, no, well, no, what I was about to say is wrong. I was going to try and eliminate 4 from here, but I don't think I can. If that's 4, I think that can be 4. Okay, all right, but here's another point that's emerging from this being all the low digits in box four. That digit is a high digit now, and it's on the whisper. So we're going to be able to apply polarity to the whisper, because that's now got to be low, that's got to be high, that's got to be low, and that's got to be high. By polarity of all things. Now I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box five. Ah, this is ridiculous. How do you set something like this so you have that amazing opening sequence and then it's still a good puzzle at the back end? Right, come on, think. Um, this is not four. That would cause double nine. That can be six, though, I think, because I think that could be double one. I'm not sure about that. Oh, there's a four in there. Okay, so that's not four. Um, one. Okay, there's definitely a one in here, and there's definitely a one in there. So where, okay, yeah. Yeah, oh, this is a three. Hang on. That's huge. Yeah, okay, so what we're what I was forgetting there is that this line had to have one and two on it to add up to six or seven. So actually, this is, this is a three, just by dint of everything else is eliminated. So this is two, four. So this doesn't have two on it. So this is a one, three pair. And now one plus three plus five is nine. So that's eight. 
So this is six, seven, and nine up here. That's eight. This square's got to be at least five different from three, so it's either eight or nine. Which does, ah, there's a pair in this column, so that top one is not eight or nine. That, that can't be three, therefore. Three would be too close to six or seven. Three, oh look, three's coming out of these squares, <laughs> which means this is one, two, four, which means A is determined as seven. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, this is absolutely brilliant. Now, we thought A went there, didn't we? So A is in one of those squares. Now, let's just take, we can take the A out, I think, or let's try and do that. So seven, seven, that can't be seven. That can't be seven because that would be zero. That is seven. So seven is in one of those three squares. Um, okay. Now I'm sure that we can do something in this box with this one, two, four stuff going on. What is that? Two, three, four, five. That square. Why have I got A in this square? What was what's what was A again? <laughs> God, was A that one? I think A was A was the seven. So the se uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it does seem to be the seven, doesn't it? In the sense that that's exactly where we could pencil mark seven in box five. This square is a little interesting. It can't be one, two, three, four from the box or five from the column. So it is, it's only six, seven or nine. And it's not nine because there's a nine, eight pair in the column. So that's six or this, this is six or seven. And now in this column, I've got a six, seven pair as well as an eight, nine pair. So the things I've not placed are one, two and four. So this is one, two or four. This is one, two or four. Let's check this one, I think. So that digit, do we know yet? Yes, we do. Okay, hang on. I had not figured this out, but I have just seen something interesting on the, on the Loch Ness Monster, which is that the Loch Ness Monster does not have eight or nine on it. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've already placed the five. So it's one, two, three, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, six, seven. And do, do my, am I saying there is a four down here? Oh, I'm saying more than that. Look at the top Remban. I've got a two, four pair there, so I can take two out of those squares. So this is, okay, so this comes down to, oh, two, four as well, actually. Okay, so the rest of this line is one, three, six, seven. That square is very restricted. Can't be one or three. That is six or seven. This one, one, three, six, seven. There might be a reason we can restrict this digit, but I don't know what it is. Um, And these are one, three, six, seven. Ah, oh, these aren't seven because of this seven. These are one, three, six. <laughs> uh, it's probably interesting, but I can't exactly see why. Oh, hang on, hang on. Where where are one and three in this box by Sudoku? This is a one, three, five triple so one and three are there one and three are there so in column three one and three are here and that square is not six or seven uh, ah and doesn't that mean seven so seven is placed this is a one or a three this square is a six i've not put six into box seven yet oh so six is up here on on the loch ness monster and six is down here on the, well, on, on the other Renban. So, oh, so if that was six, you'd have to put six up there. But if that's six, well, then we don't know anything. All bets are off, aren't they? Three, two, four. 
Oh, so if that was low, we'd have a one, two, three, four quadruple in the bottom row. This would be a five, six pair. Oh, C is two or four. It's even. And that's that digit. Ooh. I, can't connect to your I, I said, ooh. That's not the same as Alexa. It's bizarre. Okay, well, but, but this is a consecutive pair. And if that's even, that's got to be odd then. So it's definitely not two or four. This is one, three or five. Um... Ah, okay. So the seven, the seven region sum line, these two squares sum up to seven. They don't involve six or five now. So that's a three, four pair, I think. So that's not three. That doesn't tell us what this is, bizarrely. Um, three, four pair. Three, four pair. <laughs> if I say it over and over again, will it actually help me? Um... I don't know. I don't know. Oops. Okay. Um, so what have we got in this box so far? We've got loads of digits. We haven't placed. Well, that square can be one or two, I think. Can't be three, four. Can't be five, six. Can't be seven, eight, nine. It's one or two. Which is slightly odd. Is that useful or is that not quite enough? That's one or two. Uh, sorry, if you can see the next step, well done. <laughs> I can't see it yet. Uh, this square, I think, is one, two, three or four, potentially. Just, that's just looking at this row. I'm trying to see whether that means I can do something in in box. See, look, there's a one, two there as well. That digit. That digit can't repeat on the Loch Ness Monster. So whatever this is doesn't go there, doesn't go there. So that digit is in one of those two squares. So if this was in this square, oh, it could be either of those digits. If it's in that square, it has to be a one. Oh, that's weird. Hang on, that doesn't work. I don't quite understand that. I'm just going to think that through again. I think I better think it out again. I'm reviewing the situation. I'm a wrong un and a wrong un, I shall stay. Um, now, but it's wrong to be a rogue in every way. <laughs> um, uh, right, okay, so if, if what I'm saying is, if that digit goes, let's just check the premise, which was that this can't repeat on its own rim band. That's true, isn't it? So this digit either goes there or there. If it goes there, it can't be three because that can't be a three. That's right. So it would have to be a one and you can't put one over there. So it, so it does in fact go there. Therefore this, whoopsie, this is a one or a three. Those are the same. There's a one, three pair in this row. So that's a four, that's a three. That knocks three out of here, which makes this a one, six pair, which, which in turn comes back and knocks this out. So that's really weird how that worked. That's really weird. Um, but it's fantastic, I think. Well, it should be fantastic because it's doing things. Look, oh, look, that's a two. So it's got to be consecutive with one, which means this is a two. That square is now a four. That's not four. That's not two. Um, what are these digits? <laughs> are these five and six now? Probably. Um, okay, I'm not sure what else that might mean, but that was quite exciting for a moment or two. What about... Um, more explosions outside the window. What about... 
I don't know. I'm not even sure where to look. Oh, I suppose we can allocate. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, it's gorgeous. This tiny little whisper line. Well, it's con it's consecutive or well, not consecutive, but it's got two cells on it. So one of the digits is low polarity and that square can't be one, two, three or four. So that's low polarity and it can't be one, two or four. That's three. That's probably been available for ages. I just didn't see it. That's three. That's one. Um, so this square has to be eight or nine now. Oh, it can't be eight. It's got to be nine. It's got to be at least five different from three. So that's nine. So that's no longer nine. Look, so I've now got a six, seven pair in this row. So these squares over here are from two, four and five. But five is already on. Five is already on this Ren ban. So that can't be five, which means that's five in this row, which knocks back down the bottom, makes this a six. We know six now can't appear on the Ren ban in column nine. So it has to appear at the top of the grid. And from all of this, we're going to learn that. Come on, Simon, learn something. What, do, what is it we're going to learn from this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But that was again. That was quite an exciting sequence for a moment or two. Um, these squares now we can probably pencil mark them. One, two, three, and four have gone. So we're looking at five, sixes, eights, and nines. That can't be five. Um, now this was a palindrome, wasn't it? So that digit goes there and is five, six, eight, or nine. That's incredible. OK, so that doesn't seem to be resolved at all. This is, oh, I was going to say, that's definitely not a palindrome. In fact, that's just totally useless. Isn't it? Oh, is six really up there, though? Oh, hang on, that's big, if that's true. Yeah, look, six, six in this column is at the top. So none of those can be six. And that means in this column, six has to be here. And that's going to affect this region some line. Take six out of this square on the palindrome. Um... Well, I now know where the six goes in these two squares, because if that's six, this line is adding up to at least six plus five plus one, say, that's 12, but that has to add up to 11. So the six must go there, which means that's a seven, that's a six, that's a seven. Ah, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to resolve the whisper quite. Oh, that's a seven now by Sudoku using our pencil markings. Um, now, what have we not put in? Five and eight. Oh, five can go there. Has that been available for ages as well? Look, this is doing things. That's become a nine. Nine comes out of the palindrome. Four comes out of the top of the grid. I've got a one, two pair in the top of the grid. I've got... Hmm, I don't know. Eight here means that's a five. So that's a five on our on our palindrome. Oh, OK. This is well, I hope this is OK. I've got 11 here to be the sum of those three digits. So that can't be nine because the minimum of these could be would be a one, two pair and that would add up to 12. So I'm going to say that's eight. That's nine. And this is a one, two pair, which I hope can survive that piece of logic. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right. Now, look at this column. We know that this eight cell REM band doesn't have an extreme digit on it. So it's missing a one or a nine. And that digit is not the six that goes here. So it's got to be the top digit. So it must be one that doesn't appear on this eight cell REM band. So that gives us a two for the price of nothing. And three, four and seven. Now this is a three or a four. Three, four, se oh, look, no, three. It's a three actually, we've just discovered. And this is a four, seven pair at the top of the grid and we can get rid of the corner pencil marks. And okay, so this palindrome line really hasn't done, it's got, it's got us a five. Oh, well, no, that's actually okay. It gets me a digit over here. I shouldn't malign it. Oh. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. That's gorgeous. <laughs> um, okay. So what's that done? We need three, four, and eight in this in this row. Surely that's a four by Sudoku. Okay, so we're going to be able to use the whisper here, I suspect. If that's three, that has to be eight or nine. So it's not. It's eight. 
This is a low digit, which must now be a 2. And that's a high digit, which is either a 7 or a, oh, it can't be a 6. It's too close to 2. So that's a 7. That's a 7. That's a 4. It's got the most sensational flow to it, this, hasn't it? It really is classy. Now, 9 must be there. So that must be 6. 4 goes here. 2 goes here. 6 goes here. 9 goes here. All sudoku -y. 1 and 8. 1 and 8 go in. Uh, 2, 4 might not be resolved yet. 8 does the 8 and the 9. So that puts 9 here. And in this column, we've got 2s and 4s. To, oh, no, it's not done. OK, so there's still something to discover. Uh, 1 here means this is 2. So that's 1, 4, 4, 2, 2. 1, 1, 6. In this column, we've not put in a something. Two, no, 4. <laughs> uh, and in this, we need 6 and 8. Please work. And that's got to be a 2. That might be right, you know. It felt it felt incredibly smooth towards the end. How long does that take me? An hour and a half. Gosh, I'm actually not at all unhappy with that. Um, because the tester who got through this said that it was really hard, and it is really hard. It is really hard. If you if you approach, if you don't know, which, which I didn't, but I'm, I felt like I managed to work out the tricks around the divide into four relatively quickly um well, let's just see i don't know if there's a solution in it the solution is correct 20 people have solved it in 20 days that's absolutely what a magnificent puzzle icy fruit i mean yeah this is a spectacular new constructor and i absolutely love that puzzle that is brilliant. It is brilliant. Imagine trying to make that. Imagine trying to have to set it up so it's so interesting to do the region division. And then, I mean, even I mean, let's let's imagine. Let's imagine this was a a puzzle that had been submitted to the channel where all the lines were determined at the start. Was I think the back end of that was quite good enough to be on the channel. It was brilliant. It was so, all this Renban logic was absolutely brilliant. And the way it interacted with the whispers and things, it was fascinating. So that part of the puzzle holds up as world class in its own right. And that's, you only get that after you've done the world class bit at the start. Hats off. Absolute genius. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I hope some of you had a go um, and I would be very interested to hear how you got on. And I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.